Right, now it's time to introduce the maestro of Malta, um, Sunil Dent, the general manager of the Eden Super Bowl here in St Julian's, one of the delightful little bays on the island. Um, let, let's talk about Neil, and let's talk about the tournaments that you run. Um, you're British, you came here in Malta 11 years ago? 17 years ago. Oh, 17 years ago, and you married a Maltese yeah. lady and you've lived here ever since. But you come from Newcastle, I believe. Around that area, yes, sir, originally. So, I mean, that's a big cultural change to switch countries like that. Yeah. Well, I was only 21 at the time, and I hadn't sort of built my life in any way. I was still sort of studying. So I came across here, met the girl I'd eventually marry, and basically knew I could settle here. So that was it, really. It wasn't much of a decision to take. And I settled in pretty quickly. How did you get involved in the bowling centre? Started working here part time as a part time manager about 15 years ago, just over 15 years ago, and uh, just got interested in the running of the place and the sports side of it. And seven years ago, over seven years ago, became general manager. And you worked with Roderick Mall, yeah. uh, Roderick Mall at the beginning to uh, see how the tournaments are run, and you've worked on the Open and the Senior Open ever since. Yes, that's right. Yes. Um, can I ask you which you prefer, the Open or the Senior Open? I enjoy them both, but they're so different. I think I'm, if I have to give a preference, it must be the Seniors. They're, they're a wonderful atmosphere, camaraderie, and um, the friendliness of the Seniors is, is incredible. Um, the last two or three years have been running a Junior Open as well in April, is it? A little bit earlier in the year? During Around Easter, Easter time, yeah, depending yeah. on Easter falls. Mm, how does that work out? That one is, it's, it's, it's become largely a Maltese event, even though it's an Open. Um, I find that if, if you're, you're, uh, your kids from the UK, you're from Italy or any other country, if they're going to make it out here, they need to have a lot of backing from their parents and also they need to be organised by coaches, youth coaches of course, um, and even their parents. And I found in the past couple of years that's been a little bit lacking to make the trip out here. There is quite an expense involved. Uh, it is a junior tournament, so there's no prize money in there either. So that's, that's it's given us a bit of a, a bit of a knockback. As far as that's uh, for several years, the Open was a European bowling tour uh, ranking event, and that's dropped off in, in the last couple of years. But you do have the unique situation of the men's and women's divisions, which other tournaments don't have. Um, have you ever changed that or thought of changing it into one? The temptation is always there because the financial difference is very obvious to all of us. But I still just can't see the sense in, uh, I mean, looking at, it, at any other sport, I can't see the sense in having ladies competing against men. But it's, um, it's one of the draws of, of the tournament is because the women have a separate uh, division. Oh, yes. And if you take this tournament as an example, one third of my field are ladies. I don't think you'll see that kind of statistic in many other tournaments. No. Uh, thinking back over the years, can you think of any memorable moments that uh, sticks in your mind to say, oh yes, in the 2005 this happened, or in 2003 something happened? Well, not one year in particular, but I think we should be thinking about changing the name of this tournament to be the Belgian Trousers Open or something like that, because we've had for years now Roger Peters from Belgium coming over and wearing what we call his Rupert de Bear Trousers. In fact, he's known as Rupert to us in this centre. Um, uh, now, Rupert's not with us this year, he couldn't make the trip over, but this year we see a first attendance for Chris Van Damme. He turned 50 uh, just early this year, so this is his first senior open. And Chris is a big uh, fan of the flashy trousers as well. I've just seen him near the bar there, and I think he's going to give us something to look at later, later on when he's on the lanes. And of course, uh, for Chris Van Damme, it's a unique situation of having won the open, now he, he really wants to win the senior open. Well, he's definitely going to be amongst it. He's a two-time winner of the June event, the Malta Open, that was 2005-2006. But he's been coming back year after year, so what, can, can you define the magic of Malta that keeps bringing these people back year after year? Of course we're a holiday island, it goes without saying. Uh, October is normally quite a nice time of year for them to come over, it can be a bit changeable as far as well as concerned. But speaking for the tournament, um, I think they find the friendly and welcoming atmosphere that we always have here to be a big attraction. A lot of these people um, uh, make this their only international trip throughout the year for bowling. And uh, they meet up with friends year after year just at this event from other countries. So that's a big pull for those to keep coming back year after year.
And it's nice to see the weather 23 degrees and the sea temperature 23 degrees in October too. That helps a lot. So uh, there, there are a lot of changes going on in the bowling world, a lot of changes going on in the financial world. Uh, how do you see Malta positioned in this and how do you see your tournaments in the future? Well, so far we haven't been touched, touched wood by the, what they call the credit crunch. So far that's had a little effect over here. But what worries me, uh, there are two factors. First of all, the world economy situation makes everybody, everybody just so much more careful how they spend their money when it comes to holidays. These bowlers come here for a holiday, as do the, the many hundreds of thousands of other tourists. And apart from that, there's also a bit of a precarious situation with a good number of our airlines these days, which there is an uncertainty there which may put people off uh, going abroad. I mean, now that's bound to, to affect the place that more. Well, look, we, I, I know that you've got to get back to the lanes and people demanding your presence, but uh, we, we wish you a lot of luck. But tell, tell us how you learnt Maltese. How to, was speak, to speak so fluently. Yeah, that, that was pretty quick. I was always a bit of a linguist at school. I was teacher's pet in the French class and all that, you know. And um, when I got out here, I found that rather than doing lessons or whatever, I just used these. My ears were my best teachers. And I would pick up words. Once I knew a few words, I would pick up a sentence and that would become a paragraph. And uh, practice makes perfect. You have to, you have to use, you have to make mistakes. You have to have people correcting you. <laughs> and that's how, that's how you can do it. It is a knack, it is a knack. Okay, well thanks for talking to Talk 10 Pin and good luck with your talk. Cheers. Cheers.